for reading his salutations here to Peter Parker here. Radio Stark Season 2 of Recorded to Peter Parker. And I'm your host, Peter Parker. Today, I'm going to review The Hobbit Part 2, The Desolation of Smog. All comparing it to the book. I just got back from seeing The Hobbit Desolation of Smog, and it was amazing. Like, <laughs> top of the first one for damn sure, okay? So. Oh, spoiler there will be spoilers in this video, so if you have not seen the film, do not watch it. You've been warned. The movie was freaking amazing, okay? Okay, so we start off with we open up right after the first film. It starts with a flashback. Thorn is at the Prince and Pony. That if you've seen the original film, so you know where that is. It's the bar that both Sam and Pippin were when they met Aragorn. Anyways, Thorne's at the bar, and uh, these two dudes are staring at him. He's about to get up, and stuff's about to go down. And Gandalf comes out of nowhere and sits down at his table. And so they start talking about, you know, what Thorne is going to do and stuff. And uh, they end up talking about put in a quest to get to go to reclaim Erebor, you know, the dwarf, the dwarf kingdom that was taken by a dragon, Smaug. And uh, that leads us to the present day, a little scouting out the area, and uh, that orc thing in the first movie that Thorn didn't kill when he should have killed, still hunting him. And now uh, it turns out he works for Sauron. I guess Sauron resurrected him or something. And uh, or at least the spirit of Sauron. Because he was destroyed in the original Lord of the Rings. But anyways. So Gandalf and the dwarves, they go to, uh, they have to seek refuge because they're being hunted and whatnot. So that's when we get introduced to Bayorn, the, uh, what's he called? Uh, shifter or something due to turn it to a bear or something he had a small role in the film not that much but yeah, it was alright I guess anyways next thing to go to uh, the Mirkwood forest which we saw glimpse of in the first film with the spiders and whatnot I was looking forward to that so much and it did not let me down whatsoever executed well like word for word perfect like taken straight from the book Honestly, my favorite scene in the book is with uh, the spiders. We'll get to smoke a little later. But, uh, yeah, the spiders were. Oh, yeah. I like how they did with Bill Bow. We're starting to see. We're starting to see how uh, he's being drawn to the ring more and more as uh, the story progresses. It starts to become like a crutch for him. Like like a drug or something, to the point where in the Fellowship of the Ring, you could see why he's so drawn to it and whatnot, especially when Frodo is uh, the new ring bearer. And, uh, and then the elves enter the elves, led by Legolas and uh, this new chick, elf chick called uh, Toriel. She's a new character, she's not in the book, but it doesn't really bother me because she's awesome and she's played by a hot actress, so yeah, that helps. So, uh, there's this love triangle between Legolas, Toriel, and uh, Keeley. Of all the dwarves, besides Thor and Bilbo and uh, Gandalf, of course, Keeley is probably the one that has the most amount of personality. The other ones are so bland you could probably tell them apart. So uh, the dwarves get taken to the elf fortress in the Markwood Forest. And then we meet Legolas' father, Thranduil or something? Yeah. So, long story short, Bill rescues them, sneaks into the place with uh, using the ring to go invisible and stuff. And they do the barrel scene, very well done. 
some extra drama added in there. Keely gets poison or something, and uh, you know, one thing leads to another. And uh, finally, after some, after a couple more scenes, you're flying it to the mountain, the Lonely Mountain, and whatnot, and uh, you know, the Lonely Mountain. Yeah, the one with Erebor. And uh, Bilbo goes into the that mountain that he's supposed to go into, like in the book, and he encounters Smaug, voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch, the dude that played Khan in Star Trek II, Into Darkness. Oh my god, this guy scared the crap out of me. <laughs> there was a couple of times I was looking around, like, this guy here must set me on fire next? <laughs> okay. So, I'm very pleased with what they did with Smaug, and uh, look forward to seeing him again, honestly. I kind of missed Gollum, but after seeing the Smaug on the big screen, it's like, Gollum who? It's like, this guy's top Gollum by far. Like, <laughs> wish they had him in the other ones, <laughs> honestly. And uh, the way the movie ended, it was one of those cliffhangers, it's like, oh no, the tongue has hit. Yeah, that's it, folks. Until next December, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, this song is an excellent film. And honestly, this is one of the songs I gotta see again. To pick up on stuff I probably missed. But I was just so damn excited. I'm like, oh, man. Oh, another year. I gotta wait to see the next part. Oh. Only had Doc Brown's time machine. <laughs>